What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the series Getting Easy with Airflow. This is the fourth part in which we are going to be building our very own first DAG with the real world example. So let's get started. The term DAG is not a specific airflow term. In fact, it comes from a graph theory. You might have heard of directed graphs, which you can see in the screen. Whereas a DAG means directed acyclic graph, which refers to a simple graph, but with no cycles. So here is another example, which also does not have any cycles. But if you flip the arrows of node E and C, then you will have a cycle, which is not a DAG. While writing your first Airflow DAG, there are a few building blocks that you need to keep in mind. So first thing is you have to configure your DAG. So very important thing is you have to set the schedule time that on what time it needs to trigger. Apart from that, you can give configurations like retries, what it needs to do when it fails, service level agreements, timeouts, and it has a bunch of more configurations that you can set. So the other thing is the operator, which is a Python class that contains the logic to do work. In this example, we can see we have Kubernetes pod operator and Python operator. There are sensors as well, but we are going to cover that in the later videos. Then we have tasks, which is an instance of the operator. As you can see in the example DAG below, we have two instances of Kubernetes pod operator and two instances of Python operator. And the fourth and the last thing is defining the dependencies, like which task is going to be executed after which task. And that is being shown by the arrows below. So speaking of our first ingestion pipeline, which is going to be very interesting. So what we are going to do is we'll assume that there are some clients who are sending the data to our S3 bucket. And this is a raw data, so we need to do some cleaning, we need to do some merging in order to prepare this for the data analyst to do their magic. So after cleaning and processing the data, we are going to load this into our post stage bucket, which is then going to be imported to a relational database that can be easily accessible by the data analysts. So for the sake of simplicity, as well as keeping in the scope of this basic DAG examples, we are going to make some assumptions. So first thing, we are not going to actually work on S3, neither Snowflake. Instead, we are going to assume that there is a storage in a local machine in which we are landing our raw data, and as well as there is another storage in which we are going to throw our process data, and we are going to use the existing Airflow database to load the process data. So speaking of the Airflow task, we will have two. The first is going to pick up the data from raw storage transform it and load it into the process storage. The second task is going to pick the data from the process storage and will load it as a relational data into our local database. So these two tasks will gonna be as part of our Airflow DAG. Let us now jump into the IDE and start coding. What you're looking at here is the Docker Compose file that we built in our last video. If you are not familiar with this, then I would highly recommend you to go through that. The link is in the description below. But if you are already familiar with how Docker Compose works, this should be pretty much straightforward for you. So we have a Flow web server, we have scheduler, and we have an init container that initializes the database and creates the admin user. However, some new bits that I've added in here is uh, two volumes, which is the first one is the raw data and the process data. So these volumes will be shared across the local machine and the containers which are running inside the Docker. So our raw data looks something like this. So we have hotel booking records in which we have client ID, booking date, room type, hotel ID, booking cost, and currency. Two more CSV files include the details of the clients, referring as client ID, age, name, and type. And then we have hotel with name and address. So pretty much simple data set. So let us define our first tag. We are going to start off with defining the DAG directory as tags. And let's create another directory here called data ingestion tag. Create a Python file in this directory, call it anything you like. So first thing we are going to import is Airflow stuff. We import the DAG, we import the Python operator, then Airflow provides some utilities for dates as days ago, which is an instance of date time. Then we keep track of the path in which the DAG is located because this path will be different when it's executed inside the Airflow environment and it's different when you are testing in your local machine. Next is the first building block of Airflow DAG, which we are defining as the default arguments for the Airflow. So owner is Airflow and the start time, which has to be somewhere in the past because it's if in the future, you will have to wait for that time before the Airflow triggers that DAG. 
then we define the DAG itself. We are naming it as booking ingestion. It takes the default arguments as this, the description of the DAG, then the scheduler interval, which tells the airflow when you need to trigger this tag. So in this case, it's going to trigger every day midnight. Then we are keeping the catch up as false because if you keep this as true, Airflow is going to start this tag from five days before. But for now, we don't want to do that. So we don't allow the Airflow to do the catch up. It's useful for backfills and some other stuff. We are going to cover that in the later videos. Then we define our first task, which is an instance of Python operator named as transform data. It executes this Python function called transform data. Then the second task we are going to define is also an instance of Python operator called load data. Then the last building block of this tag is to define the dependencies. So here we are defining that task two is going to be executed after task one is executed. So let us look at what these functions do. So we are going to use pandas for loading and processing the data. We define this transform data function and it looks something like this. So I won't be going into the detail of how pandas work because that is not our focus point here, but we are doing pretty much very simple and basic stuff with this panda. So feel free to ask uncle Google if you have any unclarity on the panda stuff that we are doing, but it's pretty much straightforward. So we are loading all of the CSV files and then we are merging all of these three CSV files. First merging booking and client with the client ID and then merging this data frame with the hotel on hotel ID. Next, we are doing some data cleaning stuff. The first thing we are going to make sure that the date format is consistent. So if you look at the bookings or CSV, you can see some dates have slash, some dates have dash. So making the date formats as, as consistent. The next thing is we are going to keep the same currency as you can see, we have some euros and some GBPs. So we are converting euros to GBP. The third thing is our data scientist told us that we don't need the address column. So we remove that. And finally, we are going to load this process data into the CSV located at process data, process data dot CSV. And then the second task, which is going to load this data to the database is going to use SQLite database just for simplicity. So this is how this function is going to look like. First, it creates a SQLite connection by picking up the database from this location. Then it creates the connection and then it creates the table if it doesn't exist already. It reads the CSV file from the process data directory. And finally, it loads the CSV to MySQL on the table name as booking records. And if exist equal replace, make sure that we don't have any duplicate data. So now we are all set up to run the airflow with our very first tag. So first of all, let us make sure that the database is initialized. So we say docker compose up airflow in it. Oops, we are not in the right directory. So tags docker compose up. Okay, all done. Now we are ready to start all of our containers. It will run the init container as well, but this time it won't take long because the migration has already been done. And as you can see, the volumes uh, defined in the Docker Compose have already created these directories for us, process data, which is currently empty. So let us go to the local host 8081. As you can see, the airflow is already up. So let us log in as admin. Password was Airflow, which we defined in our Docker Compose init container. And voila, we have our very first tag as booking ingestion. So if you click that, you will see two tasks which we defined. So let us enable the DAG and make sure auto refresh is on. Awesome, so we have both of the tasks finished successfully. You can also view the logs of the tasks. Uh, since we are not logging any custom logs, so you won't see here, except these are the Airflow logs. If you add any print statements in any of the tasks, you will see them in this log here. So let's see what our DAG did. And if we go to our processed data, as you can see, we have something in here. So we have our date format consistent. We have the currencies all in GBP. We have the address column removed. And yeah, it does look like it is the processed data which is nice. So now let us see if it has been imported into the database. So if you click that, you will see we have this created table and some data in it. 
In order to view this nicely, you can use any of your MySQL client user interface software. The one I use is DB Viewer, which is only available in Mac, but you have plenty of options in the Windows as well. So let us create a new connection, SQLite, and give the path to the data science database, open, you check the tables, and as you can see, we have the records loaded into our database. So now let's see if it works in real time. Like let's add some few more rows into this CSV and re-trigger the airflow tag and see if it gets imported. So we uh, copy this and let's say user five also visited again on 2021 and booked the same room. Yeah, let's leave it as it is all. And now let us go back to our tree view and trigger the DAG manually again. Nice, so it has done some ingestion. So let us go back to our database and previously had 13 columns. Now if we refresh this, we should see 14 columns. There it is. So client ID5 is data on 2021. Yep, all looks good. So that was our very first tag with a simple and yet interesting data ingestion pipeline example. And of course, this was like very basic stuff, whereas the DAG covers a lot, lot more things, which we are going to cover in our upcoming videos, like uh, handling failures, uh, alerts and reportings and whatnot. So I think we are done for this video. If you liked it and it was helpful, please don't forget to like, comment and definitely share with others. And if you are new to this channel, I would highly recommend you to subscribe. This is going to keep us motivated to bring such kind of useful stuff to you in the future. So till then, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.